Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. When Deion Sanders took over as the head coach of Jackson State football, he made a promise to treat the program like a Power 5 school. Part of his vision included facility upgrades, which he has preached as important since September of 2020. Well, 18 months after Coach Prime was introduced, the aspirations for which he has spoken into existence are becoming a reality. Jackson State is currently building a brand new state-of-the-art facility that includes a locker room, training room, meeting and film room, and players lounge. Sanders took his players through a tour of the work in progress building earlier this week and shared a video on Instagram. What is being built is going to be pretty remarkable. The locker room has all the bells and whistles of a P5 program. The training room is up to date in terms of space and equipment. The film room is as nice as you will see, and the lounge is going to be tricked out to the nines. It will even include multiple barber chairs. It's going to be a pretty impressive facility, especially for an HBCU that competes on the FCS level. This is Dion showing his kids and their reaction. So basically that was the reactions. I should have did the camera on this to show it, but um I'll do that later. The um the building is the latest upgrade that Sanders has helped oversee at Jackson State just a few months after he arrived. The school upgraded its practice facility for football as well as basketball and track. The Tigers new building will be open for public use to some to excuse me. The Tigers' new building will be open for public use to some extent, but certain portions of the facility will be reserved for football operations. This is a huge move for Coach Prime and Jackson State football as it looks to continue its rise to prominence in the college football world, and Coach Prime was at the leading edge. So this this is great, man. I'm I'm proud of Coach Prime, man. Coach Prom just continues to, you know, come in, do what he has to do. You know, he continues to show, you know, that he wants to turn this into a D1, like he wants to turn this into a D1A type of bomb thing. And I think he can. I mean, he just has to continue putting in the work and I believe they could take off. Jackson State, you know, even though they're our, even though they're our rivals, you know. You know, um, I wish none but the best for HBCU. All right. Um, the Cleveland Browns were the talk of the NFL owners meetings, a high profile event that began two days after the Browns formally introduced their new quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Watson faces 22 civil suits alleging sexual assault and sexual misconduct. Two grand juries declined to indict Watson earlier this month, and Watson and Watson denies any wrongdoing during his introduction. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Sorry for tripping.
Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, he denied any wrongdoing. Doing. Hold on. Ah, oh, sorry about that, guys. The article um went away. So, they basically um took my article away. Okay, so here it is, guys. Um, the Cleveland Browns Chief Strategy Officer Paul DePodesta, <laughs> all these names, flashback to his former life as a Major League Baseball executive and recalled driving toward Cleveland Heights when news broke about Gary Sheffield signing a record-setting contract. On the radio, I heard that Gary Sheffield was going to get paid $10 million a year like AAV, which is a average annual value, right? I mean, record setting. De Podesta said Tuesday during the NFL owners meetings at the Breakers Palm Beach Resort. The reality is those records get broken pretty much every year. And now again, that was a close to the 25 years ago. You look back and it's sort of quaint that was a that that was a big deal that someone got to $10 million. D. Podesta told the story because the Browns trading for Deshaun Watson on March 18th and giving the controversial quarterback a five-year contract worth $230 million fully guaranteed is among the hottest topics in the world of sports. The deal broke the previous record for guaranteed money in an NFL contract by $80 million. It's not that we don't take it lightly, D. Podesta said, but I doubt it will be a record for a very long time. I mean, for very long, excuse me. Watson faces, of course, the 22 active lawsuits from women accusing him of sexual misconduct or sexual assault during massage appointments. Though two grand juries in Texas decided March 11th and Thursday he wouldn't be criminally charged, Watson has denied all wrongdoing. After the first grand jury ruling, the Browns, Falcons, and the Saints and Panthers engaged in a tense competition for Watson, a three-time Pro Bowl selection in danger of being suspended by the league for part of the season. The Browns ultimately prevailed in the sweepstakes, and it was a stunning twist because Watson had informed them on March 17 he wouldn't waive the no-trade clause in his contract to play for Cleveland. Browns owner Jimmy Haslam credited general manager Andrew Barry for demonstrating incredible tenacity despite Watson's initial rejection. Andrew gets all the credit for not giving up. Hasm said Tuesday, keep digging and keep digging. We had gotten some feedback that there was some heartache with the decision. I mean, think about it. 26 years old, you have four teams after you. Everybody's pressuring you to make a decision and move on. I think that came into play. Haslam insisted it was Barry's decision to continue to pursue. I know there's a perception out there, but we don't tell Andrew what to do, Haslam said. He brought the idea of a fully guaranteed contract to us and said, this is what I think would get it done. 
Baltimore Ravens owner Steve Bisciotti isn't thrilled about the Watson deal. I'm trying to answer that when I had a reaction to it, and it's like, damn, I wish they hadn't guaranteed the whole contract. Bisciotti said, told Baltimore Reporters Tuesday, I don't know that he should have been the first guy to get a fully guaranteed contract. To me, that's something that is groundbreaking and it'll make negotiations harder with others. Peter King wrote in his football morning in America column, Jimmy and D. Haslam were not the most popular people at the owner's meeting. I heard a lot of grumbling from those who think of trading six picks for a player who may be found guilty of heinous offense or B., Signing Watson to the richest guaranteed contract in league history and giving him an $80 million raise stinks to high heaven. As one team exec said, the Hasms had to know it was coming, and now that they traded for and signed Watson, it's not going away, King wrote. The Hasms said they didn't detect from their colleagues any of the feelings King described. I saw Peter King's story, and there may be people that don't want to say something to your face, but we've had great interactions with the owners like we always do. Jimmy Haslam said, so we noticed no difference. Yeah, D. Haslam added, I haven't had anybody make any comments, positive or negative. Barry brushed off the criticism, too. I don't know that that's anything that we can really worry about. Barry said Tuesday, we have enough to worry about with our own team and our own roster. We can't realistically make decisions with our competitors in mind. So that's not something that we've really given a lot, a lot of thought to. On the other hand, Browns brass continued to stress how much consideration was given to Watson's off-field baggage. This has been the most detailed and dogged potential acquisition of a player that I ever witnessed. Dave Podesta said, I mean, now in 25 plus years across two different sports, I've never been a part of anything like it. As we got more and more information through all the steps that we took, all the diligence that we that we undertook, all the people were talked to and all the additional information we got, and especially the perspectives we got from some of the different people involved or much more involved with him, ultimately got to the same place where we were really comfortable with the person. The Browns did not reach out to the 22 women suing Watson, their attorney Tony Busby told Espen on March 20th, Barry said Friday the Browns used independent investigators to research the allegations and were advised by attorneys against contacting the women out of concern it would interfere with the criminal investigation. The Haslams are confident the Browns' research got to the bottom of the cases. It's a really important decision which we acknowledge, right? Jimmy Haslam said. We come from the business world. You do deals and feel good about it, but it's got to prove out. And it'll be that way with Deshaun. But we feel good about it. You feel like you're playing a little de defense that first time. Okay, we've got to play a little defense there. We feel good about the person, really good about the player, but it's got to prove out. Barry has described the research the Browns conducted on Watson as a five-month odyssey. But Jimmy Haslam said the Browns meeting with the player March 15th in Houston was crucial. It really did take a lot of time to work through this, Jimmy Haslam said. We checked the shine out with all kinds of different people, but getting to meet him in person, obviously seeing his believing, that made the difference, and that was on Tuesday the 15th. We were comfortable then with Andrew trying to go ahead and work it out. Then it was a roller coaster. We left there thinking we were very comfortable with the person, and then we thought to a person, Coach Kevin Stefanski, Andrew, D, and myself felt like we had a really good chemistry. And the feedback we got from his team was they felt good about us. Barry called the Watson trade one of the most complicated situations I've dealt with in my career. What's not as complex as determining Watson is an elite talent on the field. Very accurate. He can win from the pocket. He can win out of the pocket. He can throw off platforms. He's a very good decision maker, Barry said. He's also a quarterback who's able to create with his legs, whether that's with the read option game, whether that's making a playoff schedule whether that's buying time and throwing downfield, that's pretty unique and that's pretty hard to find. That obviously opens up the playbook for an offensive staff, an offensive coordinator in terms of what a coaching staff can do with that skill set. It also makes it where you don't necessarily have to be perfect as a play caller. He can make a bad play good with his arm or his legs. That's something that was really exciting for all of us. We feel good about his mental makeup. 
Obviously, the last year has been difficult. He's not the first and he won't be the last athlete that goes through a difficult stretch, whether it's personally or professionally, but we do think he's in a good spot. It's just Kevin's body of work, Barry said when asked about his confidence in the coach partnership with Watson. He's very smart. He's creative. He's adaptable. I think over the past two years, he's done a really nice job of showing flexibility in some really challenging situations, whether it's injuries or C-19 related, you name it. He also has a really clear vision that we think aligns with Deshaun's strengths as a player, so we feel really good about him crafting and designing the offense that will maximize our starting QB strengths. Those are essentially the reason the Browns were willing to shatter a contractual record to secure Watson, no matter what anyone else thinks about it. So I just basically had to debunk all of that BS that Peter King, who, a.k.a. the racist media does, they like to throw curveballs out there to try to say, well, these owners didn't like the contract. Well, of course they didn't like the contract, dummy. Because this is where sports and football is going. You guys have made the quarterback position the potential position. Not only that position, you got the receivers. Devontae Adams getting paid a hundred some million dollars for a wide receiver, and then you got Tyreek who got more than him. So the quarterback, you guys say, is the most intricate position on the field. The Browns guaranteed the money because they knew the charges were bullcrap and they knew Deshaun Watson is that guy. Now, Bisciotti or Biscotti, whatever, I call him Biscotti, the owner of the Ravens. He's actually the new owner of the Ravens. Um, Shannon Sharp talks about it, that he was more cooler with the older owner than this guy. But, hey. Biscotti upset because he's scared that Lamar Jackson saw that, and that's why Lamar Jackson ain't signing, which all this is allegedly, all this is fair use act, but in my opinion, I think Lamar Jackson saw that guaranteed contract, and he saw the contract the Ravens sent to him. Lamar Jackson was like, man, get the hell out of here. I'm not going to sign that. I'm just going to play this season. I could do like Kirk Cousins. They either going to have to franchise tag me or pay me what I want. If they don't, I'll just walk. And that's what a lot of players ought to do. Take the Kirk Cousins route. Dak Prescott got hurt, still got his money. And that's why I was telling people at the time, dog, the salary cap is going to raise. They're making too much fuss. See, they're trying to blame Dak for why the Cowboys are inept in free agency. No, your owner has Alzheimer's, <laughs> allegedly. Your owner is sleep on the wheel. He's been doing this for like eight, nine years now. Dallas Cowboy fans know that. They just try to play dumb and blame Dak when it's not Dak's fault. Even with that contract y'all gave Dak, y'all could have signed more talent. But you know why you did it? Because Jerry Jones is cheap. He's cheap. He's already selling out as one of the best um, ticket prices or has the best team in, in football as far from a financial standpoint. So why does he need to change it? You dumbass fans going to keep going back to the game. Now, the thing Peter King saying owners were disgruntled, yeah, they disgruntled because they know they're going to have to do the same thing. Players are getting smarter. Players are playing longer in these games because they done softened it up. Bruh, I'm going to go get the money. Lamar Jackson is worth 300 mil, if not 350 mil. Guaranteed, he should get that. He's done more than Deshaun Watson has. Deshaun's the better quarterback, of course, but if we're if we're doing how you guys do with white quarterbacks, look at his MVPs, look at this, he should be getting paid 300 And I think he's going to get it, whether it's with them or he might be in Miami. But um, let me know what you guys think about everything. You know what I'm saying? This is the DZ report. You know, I'm going to try to come out with a lot of these during the week. Um, I just don't be having time. I got a lot going on. So 
Thank you for listening. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you love what you hear, just go to my description box. You can hit that link to my cash app. You can donate whatever your heart's desire. Not only that, um, if you want a super chat, you guys can. You know, when we go live or premiere a video, you guys can super chat. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, thank you for coming by. We are out. Dizzy.